we are going to go over the second problem of the Turkish Junior Mathematical Olympia 2013. So the problem says, find all primes PQR such that P to the 4 plus 2P plus Q to the 4 plus Q squared equals R squared plus 4Q cubed plus 1. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel and turn on the post notifications. Speaking of primes, it's natural to recall the congruence theorems of primes, such as the Fermat's little theorem, the Euler's theorem, or even the Wilson's theorem. However, we're working on polynomial expressions, and the exponents are small, so apparently these theorems won't be that helpful in this case. The next thing that I would do is to look for some simple solutions to this equation. One special property that the primes possess is that there is exactly one term that has different parity with everybody else, which is the even prime 2. Apart from 2, all primes are odd, so let's see whether the number 2 is part of the solution. So I'm going to consider the parity of the primes by taking mod 2 on both sides. First, for the left hand side, we can rewrite that expression into p to the 4 plus q squared times q squared plus 1 simply because 2p is obviously even then because q squared and q squared plus 1 are consecutive numbers which makes no matter q squared is odd or even we will still have the product to be an even number and so now this expression becomes p to the 4 mod 2 and because um, no matter whether p is odd or even, p to the 4 must be congruent to p itself, mod 2. So I will just rewrite that as p mod 2. Now for the right hand side, I can do similar things. And I will get the polynomial to be congruent to r plus 1 mod 2. Now because both sides are equal, so I can deduce that p is congruent to r plus 1 mod 2 which means P and R are of different parity. So now I've come to two cases. The first case being P equals 2, and the second case being R equals 2. Now, this makes things much simpler. For the first case, when P equals 2, I can rewrite the equation as follows, and it will become Q to the 4 minus 4Q four cubed plus Q squared plus 19 equals R squared. In other words, the polynomial about q at the left hand side is a perfect square. So here comes the magic. I'm going to construct two perfect squares okay, about q, which is all both polynomials, such that it kind of makes like a sandwich. Like having one square smaller than this polynomial, and the other square is larger than this polynomial. So my construction is to consider q squared minus 2q minus 2 whole squared, okay? And this is supposed to be the smaller perfect squared. And the other polynomial is q squared minus 2q minus 1 whole squared. And this is supposed to be the larger polynomial. After doing some algebra, I, we can tell that the difference is q minus 3 times q minus 5, okay, on one side. You know, on the other side, is q squared plus 4q minus 18. So the magic trick is, for all q that is over 5, these two quoted expressions would be positive. So which means my bound has succeeded. As in, put in this polynomial, the quartic polynomial, between two consecutive perfect squares. Well, obviously, q squared minus 2q minus 2 and q squared minus 2q minus 1 are consecutive numbers. Okay, this is the so-called bounding trick. So, in fact, for these two quadratic polynomials, for all q is there is over 5, I can tell it's positive, and so I have this bound, which means q cannot be over 5 for this equation, or else this quartic polynomial 
can never be a perfect square. And after making this conclusion, I can deduce that Q can only be 2, 3, or 5. Okay, the remaining 3 primes. Now, I've managed to um, degenerate the problem from infinitely many possibilities for Q into finally many possibilities, just 3 of them. Now, I can try them one by one. So when Q is 2, after some calculations again, I can say that R squared is 7, but it's obviously wrong because R can never be an integer. Now for Q equals 3, R squared is 1, okay, R can be 1, but R is then obviously not a prime. And the final case is that Q equals 5, and R squared is 1 and 6, 9, which gives R to be 13. Okay, so we are good. Now we have one solution set, which is P equals 2, Q equals 5, and R equals 13. So here's the first case, what we got from the first case. Now for the second case, if R equals 2, then we'll have this equation, P to the 4 plus 2P plus Q to the 4 minus 4Q cubed plus Q squared equals 5. I can, I can rearrange it, okay, just taking out the quartic part, and again using a similar trick, the bounding trick, I can tell that this is positive for all Q is at least 5, okay, for all primes at least 5, so that this quartic polynomial is larger than that perfect square. Now with this result, I can tell that P to the 4 plus 2P plus that particular quartic polynomial is greater than 20, okay, the 20 comes from the fact that P is prime, and so P is at least 2, which means P to the 4 plus 2P is, must be over 20. And the quartic polynomial would also be larger than that perfect square. This inequality would hold for all Q at B at least 5, for all primes Q at least 5. And that expression is, uh, is obviously is clearly over 5. So again, we can tell that Q cannot be a prime that is greater than or equal to 5. And again, we've restricted the possibilities to uh, finally many cases, which is that Q is 2 or 3. Now again, I can try them one by one. So if Q equals 2, we'll have P to the 4 plus 2P equals 17. Okay, obviously no solution. And if Q equals 3, P to the 4 plus 2P is 23. Again, no solution. So we will have no solution for the second case when R is 2. And the only solution set we have is that P equals 2, Q equals 5, and R equals 13. So yay, we are done. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to suggest any alternatives in the comments. If you like my videos, make sure to click the subscribe button right now and follow my channel. Thank you for your support. See you next time.